Well, that was a fairly eventful two weeks. I still can't believe just how popular the game got so quickly, and just how many people ended up playing it. My expectations were that the game would probably, you know, get a couple hundred players, and it would probably taper off and be dead within a week or so. But I, I literally could not have been any more wrong about that. I want to thank everyone for playing the game for the short time it was available. I'm so glad that so many people genuinely liked it. And you can definitely expect more games from me in the future. But today I would like to take some time and just talk about the incredibly brief lifespan of Mario Royale from the moment it launched to the fateful day that I was forced to pseudo system control stop Tomcat. I was incredibly anxious that morning. I had been working non-stop for weeks on end to put this game together, and it was set to release in just a few hours. But just the night before, I had found an incredibly weird and nearly impossible to reproduce bug. Debugging these kinds of problems tends to be very, very difficult, because there's no way to reproduce the bug directly. You just have to do what you can and sit there and wait. Essentially, there was this incredibly rare bug that happened maybe with one in every 300,000 packets that would cause a buffer underflow on the threads that write to TCP sockets. I spent the entire night leading up to the game's release trying to research and find a solution to this bug. And when it came down to it, I did not find any conclusive answers. And I was just left with like, I have to make a guess. I'm out of time. And I did. I made a completely blind guess at the problem, and by some absolute fucking miracle, it worked. It turns out that the issue was just that reading from a byte buffer in Java is not thread safe. <gasps> and then finally came the game's launch itself. I was incredibly nervous about the server's stability and performance, and basically spent the entire day constantly checking the log files and keeping an eye on the Tomcat server's resource usage. I was absolutely convinced that the server would crash at around 500 or so players, but once again I was actually very far off the mark and it kept going just fine even as the player count rose way above that. The server logs also showed no serious issues for the whole day, and I was able to go to sleep that night really relieved that nothing had gone wrong. When I woke up the next morning and I realized just how many people were playing the stupid game, I was mortified. I mean, I had released this game in like the most barely finished, bare bones state possible, and my expectation was that not many people were going to play it. But I was wrong. There were a ton of people playing it, and I felt bad. In my rush to complete Mario Royale in a reasonable time frame, I had cut out a lot of important features like rebindable controls and mobile support, and I'd also skimped out on content a lot as well, only creating three worlds to play on. And considering that there were enough people playing the game to inflate the server log files to the point where I couldn't even open them anymore, well, I, uh, I felt very responsible all of a sudden. And of course, as any sane person would do in this situation, I ended up working nonstop for upwards of 18 to 20 hours at a time for multiple consecutive days in a row in order to patch the game into a more finished state. The rest of that week is just a giant blur for me of quickly churning out updates as fast as I can, and honestly the code quality for a lot of that was pretty abysmal as I was trying to rush through and get stuff done. There's tons of jank code that got written during that week that I really, really need to rework, but considering that the game is dead, it's never going to happen, I guess. I also saw quite a few articles written about my game. My favorite in particular was a Kotaku article that called me Meme Lord Racist Trash. What an honor. You know, I should get that framed. Perfect. So now we get to the fun part of the story, the secret unlisted patch notes of Mario Royale. As I've said before, this game was designed really as a joke. It wasn't meant to be taken seriously, but it ended up being taken seriously. And as with any game that's successful in any capacity, people started writing cheats for it. Because of its incredibly rushed development, I had neglected to write any form of anti-cheat for the game. I knew the game would be vulnerable, so as a simple precaution, I ran the code base through an obfuscator to make it kind of a mess. My assumption was that if I just made it really annoying and time-consuming to write cheats, then people wouldn't want to waste their time trying to do it. 
Now, unfortunately, I may have underestimated the intense autistic tenacity of some people out there, because it was not long before people had actually put out some pretty competent cheats that worked decently. Most of these cheats were distributed on 4chan, and as a result, I began watching the threads on 4chan about my own game to find out what they were doing. Now, anti-cheat in particular is a very volatile thing. As soon as people are aware of it, they will begin trying to circumvent it. And while it has to be aggressive in order to work, the closer you cut it, the more likely it is to trigger false positives. And you absolutely don't ever want to trigger false positives on people who aren't cheating. So in secret, I began to develop the one true anti-cheat. And into this program, I poured my malice, my cruelty, and my will to ban these sweaty nerds from my video game. And thus, Virgin Slayer was born. Virgin Slayer is an anti-cheat system that relies on deception. When the server detects that a player is acting irregularly, it essentially shadow bans them right in the middle of the game. The moment they are caught cheating, they are immediately switched into a single player game. The switch is completely invisible to that player, as they can still see everyone else playing, and nothing changes about the game. But from that point on, every action they take is filtered by the server, and they can no longer truly interact with any other players. This system was very effective when I rolled it out secretly, along with other major patches. A lot of players just kept on cheating as they were, completely oblivious to the fact that they were essentially being removed from the game. But of course, they eventually figured out that something was wrong. A few people started posting about getting desynced from the game, which was clearly them mistaking the shadow ban system for an actual network problem. I decided to capitalize on this confusion, and over the next few patches, I listed a bunch of fake bug fixes related to a desyncing problem. Things went pretty well over the next few days, and I continued to hone Virgin Slayer's abilities by essentially checking the 4chan thread for cheats and developing direct countermeasures to them. Eventually though, I got tired of having to constantly check up on this, and I guess once again I just underestimated them. I assumed they would give up, but these kids were devoted to cheating at Mario. Because of this, I decided to take some more decisive action. And as a result, I created Gay Baby Jail. But before I launched Virgin Slayer Reloaded, I decided to manually ban a couple of people for good measure. You see, there were a couple of these trip figs on 4chan claiming to be epic hacker boys, constantly posting about how they were owning this noob developer who can't program. Now we all know that being a trip fig is like pretty brainlet mode, but imagine being such a nega brain that you used your trip code as your in-game name. Oof. Oh, that's a big thing. Now after I finished taking out the trash, it was time to deploy Virgin Slayer Revengeance. Dozens of people were banned the second this thing went live, and by the end of the first day, there was easily a body count of 300 or so. Virgin Slayer was an utter success, and it came with an extra bonus as well. Salty Virgin Rage. Gay baby jail got PNG. I hope this isn't an IP ban. Maybe the cunt developer should have made his little game better, and we wouldn't have had it. Banning people without a warning makes me think, maybe I should report them to Nintendo. <laughs> the game is too young to have proper cheat detection. It's fine as long as nobody calls you out. <laughs> Email address. DMCA at noe.nintendo.com It was a false ban! While the developers might make the bans, we decide whether they are right or wrong. If I'm banned for no reason then it's false. Unban me. I actually asked you on Twitter. If not, say hi to a lawsuit. Hi. The developer is a piece of dog shit and his fans are too fucking stupid to realize it. Also, it turns out the guys who are working on this are furry weeaboos who are too young to even go on 4chan. This is why parents need to beat the living shit out of their kids. I have never in my life enjoyed a delicacy quite 
like this. Pages and pages and pages of sweaty nerd rage over the fact that I had the audacity to ban them from my game for cheating. Well, we all saw this coming. I had no delusions that I was going to escape the unblinking eye of Nintendo. This was going to happen eventually, and to be honest, we made it farther than I thought we were. I briefly spoke with a law boy, and I was basically told that I had to take the game down within the next two hours. I didn't really have a plan in place to deal with this, but I did want to try and salvage the game if I could. So I DM'd a bunch of random people, and we very, very quickly reworked the game into DMCA Royale. I specifically want to thank Pixel, Damon, and Tenta for all the hard work they put in to make this possible. Now, the DMCA Royale patch in particular went out in an absolutely atrocious state. It was almost entirely broken. In our rush to get the game sorted, I pretty much had to just block out large sections of tile sets and just quickly remove every reference I possibly could. So it was, it was pretty bad at first, but over that weekend, we slowly pieced the game back together cleaned it up, and got it in a pretty decent state, I would say. I was also fairly surprised to see that the game retained most of its player base despite all of the mess we made. You know, I guess I kind of expected people to leave, but they stuck around. Unfortunately, Uncle Nintendi was still not happy. Around lunchtime on Tuesday, I got another call from Mr. Lawboy, and was told that despite all the work I had done, I was still infringing on their copyright. Now, I asked for more details, like multiple times, and was just given some really non-answers, more or less, but I, I kind of guess that it's either the level design or general gameplay mechanics, but it's hard to say either way. And the reality is, the fact that they contacted me a second time, the fact that they actually bothered to do so, means that they are out for blood. They don't want this game to exist, because simply put, it's competition for Mario Maker 2. That's the reason it had to die. Rest in peace, Infringio. You know what they say, though. It's better to die a hero than get sued. <laughs>